So with the help of large-scale TSP and VRP, now we can generalize it to solve a one-to-many system. So first, let's just recall what we introduced, some critical features for the one-to-one -one system. For one-to-one -one system, we have the fixed cost, which equals to the stopping cost plus the uh, transportation distance times the uh, unit distance cost. And also we can have a variable cost for each item. If we let V to be the total amount of items, then the total variable cost will be CV times V. So definitely there are also holding costs. Let's see, the CR is the run cost. CI is the inventory waiting cost. So if we calculate cost times the headway plus the pipeline inventory cost, so this will be the total holding cost. So here we will extend this one-to-one -one system structure to one-to-many structure step by step. So first, let's consider how we can extend the fixed cost and variable cost to a one-to-many system. So let's start simple. The first thing we want to discuss is, can we guarantee that truck is in full load? So actually, utilizing truck as its full load is kind of efficient in most scenarios. If you leave truck empty, there must be some reasons. So when is the truck not full? So there are generally two reasons. For first one, we have some restrictions on the lens, on the route lens. So this is a intuitive constraint, especially if the truck is driven by a driver. So if we have so many customers to, to serve, and then the truck is very big, visiting one customer needs certain amount of time. So if we provide service to all customers using one truck, although the load of the truck is sufficient, but the poor lungs can be extremely huge. And then the working hour for a driver is typically limited, say eight hours a day. Then in this case, the total length of a route is restricted so we cannot make the truck in full load. Or there are another cases that means we can have very high pipeline inventory cost. So for example, if the one-to-many system is designed for human beings who want to distribute people to a certain amount of destinations, people's waiting cost in the, in the vehicle during this uh, transportation can be high. So that's why you should not accumulate sufficient people to make the vehicle full. And sometimes you can see the bus is living without all capacity occupied. That is because the people's waiting costs during this uh, transportation is pretty high. Without these two constraints, that means if we do not assume a restriction on the length, and then we assume a relatively low pipeline inventory cost, or we even can ignore the pipeline inventory cost, then we can guarantee that every dispatch or truck should be dispatched in full load. So in this case, let's we assume truck is full and also no pipeline inventory. So now let's extend into the one-to-many system. So first we give some notations that N indicates the number of customers. DT indicates the cumulative demand for each customer. Here we assume all customers are identical. Recall that the cumulative demand curve, which is increasing function, and then DT max indicates the total demand at T max. And let L indicates the number of dispatches, and V max indicates the capacity of the truck. So for each dispatch, let's see the dispatch time is from T1, T2, until TL, because we have L dispatches. Due to this metric assumptions, there's no need to differentiate some customers with others. So that implies that every dispatch, all the customers will be served equally. And then the core idea for us to solve the one-to-many system is trying to decompose this problem into one-to-one -one system which we solve schedule with adjusted cost terms due to many destinations. In fact, under our assumptions previously introduced, we can kind of consider the symmetric properties of the customers and then decompose it into a one-to-one -one system with some adjustment terms. Or in other words, the schedule for this one-to-one -one system is independent decision with the factors caused by multiple destinations. So we can give you this decomposition principle. So transportation cost independent of schedule. 
So the scheduling is just a one-to-one -one system, and then the transportation cost will be considered as just terms to multiple destinations. So let's keep this notation in mind. We can immediately derive some interesting measures. First, let's see the total number of tours. So for each truck, it serves from the depot to many destinations and returns. That is called one tour. So we can calculate the total number of tours immediately from these notations because they're symmetric properties. That is the total demand for each customer times the number of customers. Actually, this is a total demand. And then divided by the capacity of the truck. This is intuitive. So then we can calculate this total demand, which equals to the numerator. So within each tour, we can have multiple stops. So we can calculate the total number of stops. Total number of stops, including two parts. First, the stop at the depot, we have L dispatches. Every dispatch, each customer must be served once. Right? So we can have total number of stops for those customers. And also because each truck departs from the depot, so the total number of tours indicates how many departures from the depot. So the total number of stops includes the depots together with every customers. So we have more and more notations. Let's recall our one-to-one -one system. Our transportation cost includes a fixed cost and a variable cost. So here the fixed cost indicates one stop and the cost related to the transportation distance. Now for each truck, we have multiple stops. So that NS indicates the number of stops in each tour. So the stopping cost will be adjusted into this one and then plus uh, transportation distance related cost. So this is now the fixed cost for each truck. Now let's revise it into one to many. So the total number of stops now we have calculated and then the total transportation distance we have already introduced it from our VRP. So this is a fixed cost in the one to many and also for the variable cost we can have the total number of items times unit variable cost. So now we can combine the fixed cost and the variable cost to generate the total transportation cost, where the total fixed cost has two terms, and then the cost related to the transportation distance. Here note that the original VRP distance goes to the line haul cost plus the VRP local detour. So we extend this form to our multiple dispatches. So you can see the first total demand is increased from the average demand at each customer to the total demand. And then the local detour is amplified by dispatches. So this is a relatively long equation. But in fact, for our problem, we can find out our decision variables actually is just the total number of dispatches. So let's rewrite it. So you can see now the first term is a kind of fixed cost related to each dispatch. And then the second term is kind of the variable cost adjustment related to each item. So this is number of dispatches. This is a number. This is the number of total items. So to understand the impact of the number of dispatches, let's give an example. So suppose that we have a depot and then we have four customers. So in this case, n equals to four. And then let's assume that the capacity of the truck is just a four. And then the cumulative demand for each customer is two in T max. And then T max is two. So here, let's see if we assume there are two dispatches, means the total demand is decomposed into one and one. So let's see the demand at each node is decomposed into one and one. Every dispatch, one demand is satisfied. And then for L equals to one, the first dispatch, let's see, we just serve all the customers. So the total demand for this dispatch is 4, which is the same as our capacity of the truck. And then we can do another dispatch at T max. So here we have two dispatches. In each dispatch, we serve demand 1 for each customer. So let's suppose we consider the same case, but let's change the decision from, from two dispatch into one dispatch. So now let's change it to 1. 
So for one dispatch, because the capacity of the truck is four, so we cannot serve all the customers with one truck. In this case, every demand for each dispatch has to satisfy all its demand because we only dispatch one time. And then we will have two trucks needed for this dispatch. So compare these two for the first one, we can see the number of tours is two. We dispatch it two times. Each, each time we dispatch one truck with one tour. So the total number of tours is two. And then the total number of stops. So for the first time, one truck is dispatched with five stops. And then the second time is also with five stops. So the total number of stops is 10. And then the total number of items. The first tour dispatches four items. The second tour also dispatches four items. So in total, it dispatches eight items. And now if we have only one dispatch, so the number of tours, we still have two. The number of stops is a little bit less, right? We only have six stops in total. And the number of items we shipped is still eight. So from this example, you can see that if we increase the number of dispatches, more stops will incur. But the total number of tours and total number of items remain the same. This tells us if we increase the number of dispatches, there are more costs related to these stops. So now let's consider our holding cost. So similarly, with our one-to-one -one system, the holding cost, we also consider two cases. First one, let's consider the rent cost is much larger than the inventory waiting cost. So in this case, remember what we did for one-to-one -one system. We will equally divide the load, and then each load is dt max divided by the number of shipments. So in this case, the number of shipments becomes the number of dispatches. So we can calculate our total holding cost. So we have n customers. Each customer generates one holding cost. And then the load or the rent space is given by dt max divided by L. And also we have unit rent cost times the storage time. So if we sum them up together to have our total cost, so remember our decision variable here is the dispatch schedule, number of dispatches. So this gives us also an EOQ form. So this can give us optimum number of dispatches and then the optimum total cost. So a direct observation on the optimum number of dispatches can tell us if we have relatively higher run cost, then we should have higher number of dispatches. That means each time the load is smaller. Or if we have relatively higher fixed cost or higher unit transportation cost, and then our number of dispatches should go down.